Good evening, everyone. Today we are going to see how plastics impact our earth. So, as UN Secretary General said, the world cannot afford delays, indecisions, or off measures to take care of the planet Earth. So, the same way what we are doing it is we talk a lot but implement very less or carry out the agreed actions not wholeheartedly. So that's the reason one organization has tried their level best to conduct the program for the general public. So I'm repeating it again since I did not cover a lot of topics for want of time. Most of you know about me people who want to know about me can go through this slide later so we'll get into the plastic slide away plastics has penetrated into our life so deeply which we cannot imagine that means from either automobile or furniture or household kitchen containers or fast moving consumer goods or you talk about uh, domestic appliances medical appliances, everywhere the plastics are penetrated. So you just cannot live without plastics. It becomes indispensable now and part and parcel of our life. So now what we need to do is el eliminate plastics is not possible. So what we can do it, we are going to talk in this presentation. How plastics penetrated so much into our life. Plastics offers numerous advantages. That means weight to performance ratio, or durability, or corrosion resistance, or inert for different applications, or aesthetics, or moldability. So many things we can keep on saying. And most important is it's the most cost effective material. So, just for example, if you take all the plastic components in your automobile out and replace it with suitable material, your mileage drops, drops heavily, drops heavily in the sense is 50% your mileage comes from. That means if you're getting 12 kilometers per liter of petrol, it will come down to 6 liters per liter of petrol. That means all the automobiles we change it as a policy decision throughout the work globe and what will happen that CO2 emission currently what we are giving it because of automobile emissions will double overnight that is the impact plastic has created so we will try to understand how the plastics demand has increased according to the data available 2022 it has 470 million tons per annum and it is expected to be at 1000 million tons per annum by 2050. Most important, see the graph what we have shown in the presentation. Almost 26% of the plastics whatever we produced was consumed in last 25 years. That means in last 25 years, the plastics has penetrated into our life so deep. Many times we think that the plastics is recyclable. I'm talking about thermoplastics. So we think that the plastics can be used and thrown and it can be collected. It can get goes for the recycling, get recycled. But I'm giving the real data. Throughout the world, only 9% of the plastics are recycled. Incineration is a controlled burning it. Okay, only 12% of the plastics are burnt. I am talking the world figures. Remaining 79% ends up in polluting earth or polluting water, whatever it may be. So, we are not saying that plastics are bad, we are saying that people are bad. We have to change our mindset because. We are thinking that it gets recycled. It is not getting recycled. Why it is not getting recycled, we'll see it later. So the plastic production has phenomenally grown over 100 years 
from 2 million tons per annum to 1000 million tons per annum. We would like to, to be a figure in 2050. If you see the rural population, our rural population as of now will be approximately 8.1 billion only. Whereas what we have produced in plastics in last um, maybe 70, 80 years, it is around 8.3 to 9 billion tons of plastics have been produced. And developed countries like US consumes huge and uh, waste creation is also huge. Either they are segregating or they are landfill, they are using it or sending it to other countries and reprocessing. Actually, other countries are not reprocessing, they put it. So throughout the world, now people are becoming aware of the pollution. They stopped importing waste from other countries, even for recycling. China has stopped it, India has stopped it, Indonesia has stopped it. So what will happen is the people who are using huge amount of plastics, that is a huge problem for themselves. You take an example, like US, per capita consumption is approximately 170 kilogram of plastics. That means every US citizen on average consumes 170 kilograms of plastics per year. Whereas countries like India, where the developing countries, we consume approximately around 20 to 25 kg of plastics per year. But what will happen? The people are consuming huge and they put the blame on the people like us. But everyone has to, it is not that blaming somebody else. It is what I am trying to say is everyone has to understand, everyone has to reduce the usage of plastics. Oh, we are going to see that. If you put the plastics into burning, okay, currently the world gets heat recovery by different things because thermosets cannot be reprocessed. So thermosets are we are melted and we put into the furnace and getting it heated up. That air pollution, it contributes around 10 to 13 percent of the total air pollution predicted in 2050. Land pollution, I already told you how much amount of land pollution. Assuming that we are consuming around 470 million tons per annum, Approximately around uh, 300 million tons of annum is being dumped as a mixed plastics. I will tell about what is mixed plastic later. Here we talk about green energy. Green energy in the sense is uh, people say that okay, solar is a green energy, windmill is a green energy, all these things. But there are also plastics plays an important role. How many of you know that 60% of windmills are made out of plastics, whether we call fiber reinforced plastics or ABS or polycarbonate or different materials are used uh, that because of the functional requirement. It is not possible for some other material to replace it and it will not be cost economic. Similarly, in solar panels also approximately around 10% of it is from the plastics. So here, I am just giving one small example. Wind turbine blades are made out of FRP, which is a thermoset, which is not recyclable at a chart or nominal cost. Of course, recycling for a thermoset is developing it, but it's going to be huge. The cost is going to be huge, recycling, to get the same properties. So what currently they are doing it, they are breaking into pieces and putting it for landfill or putting it for uh, controlled burning. Control burning is not feasible, and so what happens is it goes to the landscape, which means polluting the mother earth. Now we talk about problems the plastics are giving to the human, according to the experts. Microplastics and nanoplastics. Microplastics is a small particle which breaks down due to environment conditions, maybe UV. Um, ultraviolet rays of sun or longer duration exposure to the atmosphere are rubbing against each other. The plastics are, microplastics are created. Two common examples I will tell you. You have an automobile traveling in a road. The rubbing of the tire on the road creates microplastics. Similarly, you have an 
artificial grounds that means you have a turf that means you are keeping a, a green grass type of material and that material if you are playing it already creates a, a dust that is a microplastics that gets into the uh, environment whether it is going to be on the earth or it is going to be the ocean it is going to be a dust which is going to create problem for you similarly we are washing our clothes in the washing machine how many of you are aware that 60% of our clothes worldwide is made out of polyester. So that particles also goes into the drain, which goes again back to the uh, ocean or river or anywhere it may be. Similarly, the industrial waste also coming up. Industrial people are putting it so many like detergents or somewhere we are adding plastics voluntarily to improve the performance those plastics also will not get dissolved. It will be as a microplastics. All these plastics create a human problem. What human problems we'll see it next. So, nanoplastics. So, in technical term, we call it as MNP. It is micro and nanoplastics. Nanoplastics much more smaller than the microplastics, one newton meter. So, here the nanoparticles is very difficult to measure, very difficult to control, very difficult to remove it. So these microfibers, what happens is from the textiles, fragments, plastic pellets, and metals from the industry, foam, micro beads, all this forms a nanoplastics. So we humans are exposed to micro nanoplastics through indigestion, inhalation and skin contact also. If somebody is using plastic component and touches the other person, again, there is a possibility of the microplastics or nanoplastic get into the other person's hand. And we eat it without knowingly, we consume it inside our body also. And most important thing is many times people say that, no, we bioplastics has come, it will automatically degrade. That is a myth. Many industry people who know about bioplastics understand it very clearly. But the common public does not understand what is bioplastics. So this, this graph is given very easy understandable. Bio-based bioplastics are completely biodegradable. I am repeating it once again. Bio-based bioplastics are completely degradable. That means Whatever plastics we are producing out of starch blends, okay, which will get decomposed automatically. No worry about it. But what industry is selling to the people is bioplastic, they use it, but bio-based bioplastics. That means that is not bioplastics, bio-based bioplastics, which is non-degradable. That means a PTE, PA and BTT are also called as bioplastics in generic term. So what happens is many times we think that whatever, like nowadays you are seeing that big supermarket or very expensive years, they'll give so ma'am, we are giving you, or sir, we are giving you um, biodegradable plastic bag. Biodegradable plastic bag, you take the bag, put it in water, whether it get dissolved or not. If it is not getting dissolved, it is not bio-based bioplastics. It is bio-based, non-biodegradable plastics. People call it as a bioplastics. Okay. And they say that it, it reduced our uh, time. So earlier it was around 78 years. Now we are going to reduce it by 3 or 4 years or 10 years, whatever it may be. But what happens is bioplastics is not viable solution. Just imagine how you can consume bioplastics or bio-based bioplastics at a free of cost from a grocery which is produced from potato. Somebody is buying a huge amount of potato, process the potato, convert and create a plastics, make a bag out of it and giving it for free. Nothing is going to happen. On top of it, if you see what is the bioplastics production capability in the world, it is 
million tons per annum as against our requirement of 470 million tons per annum. If you just put that figure, that means 2.8 million tons, 2.18 million tons divided by 470 million tons, it is approximately 0.005%, which is very low and very expensive. So if somebody is saying you bioplastics, don't get fooled up. Bioplastics, you put it in water. If the if it dissolves, then it is bioplastics. But that bag or uh, that product will be much more expensive, which you cannot afford. So what even says? What is the solution for this problem? Even suggests that okay, we can reduce the size of the problem first. Reduce the size of the problem in the sense is first method. What he is saying is reuse the plastics. Reuse the plastics in the sense what you take a plastic bag and dispose it because it's very thin and it is available free of cost. Assuming that the government imposed a rule that every plastic bag to be minimum of 150 micron thickness, then what will happen is the bag can be utilized for many times. That can be used for many times. So what happens? You are reusing the same bag. So what happens is reducing the consumption of the plastics. Okay, that is a reuse one method. Second thing is called recycle. Recycle is, you of course, recycling is expensive as I told you. If you segregate properly or if you dispose properly, that material automatically goes there and gets recycled properly. For our example, you dispose plastic bottles made out of pet. If you dispose it separately, then what will happen is the bottle reprocessor will pick it up from that and take the bottle. Bottle is made out of PET and cap is made out of different material. Both the things can be removed and can be used. But unethical people, what they do is you take the plastic bottle, you are throwing it out, take the plastic bottle, remove the cap and remove the ring on the cap. In some designs, we have a ring also. But what happens is they buy separately caps and put the ordinary water, put a seal with the new cap. And you think that you are opening it, you are getting a new bottle. Actually, you are not getting a new bottle. You are getting a um, ordinary tap water and you are paying the price of... This is unethical business people they do. So how to avoid um, such type of things in business, especially in countries like India and other places, we need to consume your water from a reputed place where you are buying, like whatever brand you are buying it. After drinking the water, put the bottle cap inside the bottle. You squeeze it, it will bend, it will bend it and push it inside the bottle. The moment you push inside the cap into the bottle, what will happen is the bottle needs to be recycled. So when it goes for recycling, then they cut it. Currently, even however you are crushing it, you put it in a ordinary stretch flow molding machine and put the amount of heat and air, you will get the exactly same bottle as it is. So crushing is not going to help you to recycle. You have to put the cap into the pot. Similarly for automobiles, like most of the components, now current one exhibition is going on at US, it's called NP. In that exhibition, most of the components they displayed in the exhibition produced by the different uh, extrusion or injection molding are recycled material. We should encourage people to start using recycled materials. So thereby we can reduce the consumption of fresh plastics and reorient ourselves and we have to look out for different diversity of what are the alternate materials for the different things. So what even suggests is you move the market or transform the market from linear to circular. You need to have three market shifts. How we are going to gain that? If you are implementing properly, okay, at least now if you start it and take it up everyone, everyone can do from our point of view, not worrying about what government is going to do. First, reduce your plastics consumption. That means, simple example. 
don't order anything on swiggy or zomato or any food joints because the moment you order a food from a food joints or the delivery people those people bring the food in a plastic container of course they will say that it's my goal uh capability is to polypropylene nothing will happen all these things okay but this is a single use plastic it's made so thin so what will happen is they use this and i told you earlier they are not properly recycled nine percent only getting recycled throughout the world room but that so what happened those plastics uh goes and spoils in the land so if you stop buying single use plastics that means you are not stop I'm. I'm not saying every time. Wherever it is possible, reduce that. So that reducing it itself will create an impact on reduction of total consumption, or what is the requirement by thirty percent. Mm. And substitute with another material. Either we instead of using plastic, you can use a paper, or like boxes. You know, you can use a copper or a carbonated boxes. But coated paper is something different. But what we wrongly understand is plastic cup. Plastic cup is not a plastic cup. People call it as a paper cup, but paper cup inner layer is just peel of your paper cup. There will be a small layer of plastic in there. Otherwise, you hold your newspaper and pour coffee or tea into it. It will not hold because of the plastic it holds it. But when you are doing both, taking food containers or using the bought out foods in the containers and Uh, drinking tea or coffee in a plastic cup, you are adding, you are adding microplastics, nanoplastics into your body. Recently, a study has been conducted and found that in a tea cup, you are taking a tea in a paper cup which is coated with the plastic. Twenty-five thousand microplastics are getting into the body every time. You decide whether you want to take care of your because when one thing goes into inside your body. it can go anywhere it can go to your brain it can go to your things so many things i don't want to talk and create a panic situation for you third one is start converting products with more recycled material which means we can reduce whatever produce available which we can reconvert that means we can recycle it which reduces around another 20% okay so this is a huge thing. if you start doing this At the same time, we can work on different uh, what is the uh, alternative material suitability, which is which is not going to harm the other mother earth. So that is what we want to change over. There. So reduce, substitute, recycle, and dispose it properly. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can write to me. Of course, policy and legislative changes are required. to implement whatever we talk okay it depends upon the government it depends upon the country it depends upon the people who care for the plastics so my email id is available you can write to me and we are happy to help you out thank you